What's up, BGBers, and welcome to another What's Cooking. My name is Ark, and I hope that you're subscribed so that you're notified when we post a new video, because sometimes you can win a free pledge, just like in this video. Stay tuned until the end to find out how. Today, the board game fresh off the grill is Young Nun, Life of Gentry, published by Moadius Games, designed by uh, Du Gu Wei. I really hope I said your name right. If I didn't, my apologies. In this game, players find themselves in the height of the Ming Dynasty, working as artists that hike and sail across the land for inspiration, all in the name of fame. Yingnan is at its heart an action selection, bag building, area majority worker placement game. The game is played over six rounds with two phases in each round, the action phase and the upkeep phase. In the action phase, players take a total of three turns performing the following. First, choose any action tile on your player board. The symbol on top dictates the location you intend to visit with your scholar. Then remove the rightmost action tile from the game, gaining the benefit listed at the bottom. Then take the scholar meeple and place it on the location that you chose. At each location, you have the ability to perform different actions, so choose wisely. At the first location, you can mingle among society. You know, grab a cheeseburger, share some ideas. Actually, here you can adjust your place in the turn order. Then you have a choice of taking two portfolios from the display and add them to your hand. Take one portfolio and one idea token, or take two idea tokens. If you choose to visit the tea house, gain a coin for each servant you have on the display there. I'll let you discover yourself how they get there. Then, choose one of the following. Gain idea tokens matching the display, or publish one of your own portfolios. This is a great way to gain points and end of round income. At the parlor, you can take some time to relax, spend a coin to reduce stress, and place a servant token on a muse of your choice. Gain the bonus of that muse card. If this is your second token on the card, take the muse card and add it to your player board. You will now have a continual bonus at each income phase. Alternatively, you can visit the tavern for some relaxation. You know, order a drink and a round of fries for the table, maybe with a little bit of that cheese sauce. Mm. Sorry, I shouldn't film whenever I'm hungry. Here you can actually pay one coin to reduce stress and gain one point for each of your servants on the display. Here you may also either gain idea tokens based upon the display or publish a portfolio from your hand. If that's not enough for you, maybe you consider yourself the adventurous type. You may travel. Start with the city in the center of the map. You can play a servant token there adjacent to the city or adjacent to one of your tokens along the path. Receive the bonuses listed at that location. Lastly, you can visit the temple fair. You move your servant one space, or you can pay to move them two or three spaces, receiving any bonuses you pass over and taking the action where your servant stops. Once all players have taken their three actions, from right to left, place servants on the boats underneath the actions you've selected. Then the upkeep phase begins. First, receive personal income from portfolios, muses, and so on. Then adjust the turn order, draft new action tiles, advance all the boats. The boat furthest to the right will come off the board. The player with the most servants, or in the case of the tie rightmost servant, chooses what tile will be scored in the coming rounds. Then a new boat is added to the left which also has in-game point bonuses. After the boats have moved, it is time to score if it's an even number round. You score points for portfolios you have completed, assistance in your studio, and any matching trends you have. Then raise your stress level by one. Then add one stress level for any incomplete portfolio you have and muse you have. Be careful not to stress yourself out. If the round was odd numbered, just skip the scoring, raise your stress, and begin the next action phase. Let me be honest with you here for a second and tell you the designer of this game took a lot of risks. Honestly, it's a big risk to mix so many mechanisms in one game. Often reviewers state that it's not always good to throw everything in the kitchen sink into a Kickstarter, like adding a solo variant if it didn't need it, or saying it's a two player game even though it's really best at three players or more. But I'll admit, in this case, it works. There is indeed a lot going on in this game, but everything is built on tension. The tension that everything you do has an effect somewhere else in the game. Placing a servant at a location isn't just about the action you wanted to take, but also about which boat is underneath that action. While you might want to be the one to decide which tile from that boat will affect future scoring. The simple fact of selecting an action and having to remove another tile from the game is crazy. If you take away too many of a specific location tile or action tile, you will lock yourself out from taking that action until you draft new tiles. It's so good, like a perfectly stacked burger. You can't just throw things on there or the bun will become soggy, the cheese won't melt, and I could go on, but I will spare you. Personally, I find the theme interesting and the colors along with the components are striking. It has good table presence, but it also has a big footprint. 
However, there's a lot of replay value in this game due to the modularity, and after my first play, it left me thinking about interesting strategies for the future. This is a great sign. This game is for more experienced gamers or those looking for a game at a more advanced level, but not quite in the expert level area. And don't forget, it has a campaign you can play as well. So don't be nervous. Go on over to the crowdfunding campaign using the link in the description below and show them some support. I will see you there. Now for the giveaway. To participate, all you have to do is subscribe and answer the question in the comments. Which mechanic of Yangnan do you find most interesting? For all the other details of the giveaway, take a look at the description below. I really hope this preview was helpful for you in making your decision as to whether or not this game was for you. If it was, please leave a like, and as always, stay hungry for more board games, my friends.